Uh, hello, my name is Rajan Trajan, and as we all know, Dr. Abdul Kalam, who was the people's president, the late president of uh, India. And in fact, he was so popular that he related very well with the younger generation and people of all walks of life. Therefore, we miss him. And the one person in our community who has had the opportunity to actually work with Dr. Kalam was uh, Mr. Mysore Nagraj. And I'm happy to say that uh, Mr. Nagraj is here with me to talk to me about the life and achievement of Dr. Abdul Kalam. Uh, Nagraj, welcome. Uh, thanks, Raj. Um, well, uh, I'll just introduce myself yes. to start with. Uh, mm -hmm. My name is uh, Nagraj Mysore. And uh, I have uh, passed out of uh, engineering uh, from the same college as you did, that is uh, National Institute of Engineering, that was way back in 1972. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the very first job I got was in uh, Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, VSSE in Trivandrum. I worked there for four years, and then uh, later uh, got uh, transferred to ISRO Satellite Center in uh, Bangalore, where again I worked for about 16 years. So totally I got about 20 years experience working in space research. So space research, yeah. right. Then uh, I shifted, I moved to uh, Sydney. Sydney right. Again, I got an opportunity to work in a satellite project here. Okay. Uh, there was a first uh, satellite called FedSat right. in uh, Australia. So that was uh, designed by uh, a team of uh, scientists and engineer, engineers from CSIRO and uh, a lot of other universities. So I worked in CSIRO doing some design work for that satellite okay. as well. Right. Uh, then I worked in uh, different uh, uh, defense uh, industry companies mm -hmm. in uh, Sydney. Um, so that's my background mm. in general. In so you're basically an electrical engineer? Uh, I did my electronic engineering and communication engineering and uh, also got my uh, master's degree from Indian Institute of Science, uh, Bangalore, Bangalore, in communication engineering. Okay. So how, how did you come in contact with Dr. Abdul Kalam? Yeah, as I mentioned already, the very first job I got after doing the engineering was uh, in uh, VSSE, that mm -hmm. is Vikram Sarabhai Space Center in Trivandrum. Right. So when I joined this uh, institu institution in uh, 1973, uh, Dr. Kalam was already there. He was uh, holding a position like uh, the uh, project director for uh, a prestigious co project called uh, Satellite Launch Vehicle, SLV-3. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, till that time, uh, uh, ISRO was uh, doing development of small range uh, rockets and then looking at his uh, competence and uh, capability, he, uh, he was awarded uh, this project director's role for this uh, uh, special uh, uh, purpose uh, launch vehicle. Mm -hmm. And this launch vehicle was uh, supposed to launch a smaller uh, 40 kilogram satellite and the satellite name was uh, Rohini. Right. And uh, that's the satellite project where I got involved and started working in Trivandrum. Mm -hmm. So I did some uh, communication uh, system design mm -hmm. for Rohini satellites. Uh, so I used to attend a lot of uh, meetings, technical meetings and design reviews, where a lot of interface issues between the satellite and the launch vehicle were discussed. Right. And uh, Kalam used to chair a lot of those meetings. Right, right. So I was attending from uh, Rohini satellite side, whereas he was attending, he was having a much bigger team. Mm. Uh, he was attending from uh, the uh, satellite launch vehicle side. Mm. Uh, basically, he was already uh, having very popular role uh, from his side. And uh, people used to call him uh, taskmaster. That means... Oh, really? uh, he was uh, having special uh, abilities wherein uh, somehow he extracts work from anybody. So right, right. nobody can sit idle. Right. Uh, you know, that was uh, a stage when uh, in Trivandrum or anywhere in Kerala, there was a lot of labor problem. Mm. Any industry you put in Kerala, you won't get out any work from there. Right, right. That was the situation. Uh, because, uh, you know, we used to have a joke like if there are two persons in Kerala, they will have more than three unions <laughs> unions or political parties. <laughs> Which so, is same everywhere, I think, wherever Indians are. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, that was uh, a tough situation there. Yes. And um, he, because of that uh, difficulty in getting uh, work out of people, uh, in fact, uh, from ISRO, some of the project like uh, very important Aryabhatta satellite project where I also worked, 
that was uh, moved from Trivandrum to Bangalore. Okay. Because they thought that if the project is there, they can never finish that. Uh, so, under these uh, type of uh, circumstances, uh, Kalam was, uh, with his special abilities, he could uh, muster work from all subordinates and engineering team mm -hmm. and then uh, successfully completed this uh, project, which is uh, SLV-3. He completed mm -hmm. and launched it in 1980 or so. Right, right. So, uh, but how did you personally come in contact with him? Yeah, this is uh, technically we used to meet and uh, have some discussions and uh, I definitely met him uh, mm -hmm. at that level. Uh, you know, as a bachelor, I started living in Trivandrum in a lodge. It was right. uh, called Indra Bhavan. Right. And I was uh, living in the ground floor in one of the rooms and uh, he was living, he was also a bachelor and he remained a bachelor. Of course. Uh, yes. ever, uh, For the rest ever, of his life. Yeah, ever, ever uh, mm -hmm. after. And he was uh, living the upstairs, one of oh, the rooms. Okay. And um, so whenever uh, we used to go in and out, we used to bump uh, into each other. And uh, yeah, he, he basically, he must be a very simple man. Otherwise, uh, he would not uh, even have uh, acknowledged me being there. That's right. Because I was j just a junior uh, engineer who had just joined the organization. But he used to stop and wish me and then uh, have, a chat. have a chat whenever mm. he sees me around. Okay. So, I definitely uh, appreciate uh, mm. his simplicity in those uh, regards. And uh, he used to bring his uh, technical team from uh, ISRO even to his room and have a long discussion till late night like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock in the night because we could hear all the discussion and technical arguments going okay. on the upstairs because right, right. we were uh, uh, having some sleep, which was uh, <laughs> um, disturbed. <laughs> right, right. So. Um, and uh, in spite of that, uh, he used to have some relaxation also, because uh, some Sundays we used to hear uh, some uh, sound of uh, pleasing uh, veena coming out from uh, upstairs. That's right. was, he was uh, a very good veena player, uh, wasn't he? We initially wondered who the who the hell is uh, playing <laughs> veena here. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> yeah, then we learned that he is the one who practiced uh, Vina in spite of his uh, busy schedules of uh, technical and official work. Mm. Uh, How did you find him as a person? Uh, very, very down to earth because uh, as I said, uh, he used to just stop and talk if you meet him anywhere. And, uh, uh, and officially we could uh, uh, approach him for any of our technical issues and uh, uh, being a taskmaster, he once a uh, job is given, somehow he sees that it is completed. Right. He will leave uh, no stone unturned till he finds a solution for uh, any yes, problem. Yes. So that was his uh, reputation at that time. Mm. Um, yeah, this is the association I had uh, mm. while I was uh, working in Trivandrum VSSC. But uh, later I definitely know that uh, he completed the project and then uh, he was given different role in uh, headquarters in uh, Bangalore and then uh, he he had come from uh, DRDO f uh, earlier so he moved back to DRDO in Hyderabad and uh, he adapted a uh, lot of uh, technologies that has that uh, came out of uh, SLV3 experience he adapted those in uh, missile parts and uh, he launched missile program the, and I think uh, the Agni program was uh, launched by him mm. and uh, later he was known as a missile man from uh, yeah, DRDO uh, then he was uh, involved in the nuclear uh, uh, blast that was uh, carried out mm -hmm. and then okay. uh, yeah yeah and then uh, 2002 to 2007 uh, he was uh, uh, inducted into presidency mm -hmm. of India so uh, all the stories we know of course yeah but uh, his uh, as you said that he was such a simple man and he used to relate to everyone yeah. that continued even after he became the president didn't it exactly so even after the uh, completion of presidency we know that he kept his uh, active life yeah. in technical field and uh, he was uh, uh, going around giving uh, speeches and uh, vision 2020 all uh, uh, programs he launched and uh, he once came to Sydney, you yeah. must have... Uh, That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. After you left, uh, uh, yeah. uh, he left to and yeah. also you left and came yeah. to here, uh, yeah. to Sydney. Yeah. Uh, you had the opportunity to catch up with him when exactly. he came to Sydney yeah. a few exactly. years back. Yeah. 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 When uh, I came to know that he is uh, coming here, in that was in year 2011, I think. Uh, Dr. Srinivas, who works in uh, university as a professor, yeah. 
So he had the uh, key role in organizing a seminar or a lecture in Sydney University. Right. And then uh, once I came to know of that, uh, I asked Srinivas, uh, is it uh, possible for me to meet him? Mm -hmm. uh, Srinivas uh, definitely, he said, and he gave me that opportunity. Right. And even before uh, the lecture started, I have uh, jumped across the security and uh, I was allowed to meet him. I see. And uh, yes, he remembered uh, our friendship very well. Oh, and okay. uh, uh, yeah, how can you forget uh, those uh, golden days? That's what he said. Oh, okay. And uh, how long yeah, was the about, uh, yeah, in that uh, busy time, uh, he, could sp uh, he spent almost 10 minutes with me. Uh, before Talking the lecture, the yeah, past, uh, yeah, he remembered my, me as well as uh, the time uh, he had in Indra Oh, okay. Yeah, so that was uh, quite good, and I was uh, so impressed, and I was uh, very happy that uh, he recollects uh, of course. all that yeah. uh, in his memory. So, when he passed away recently, yeah. uh, how, how was your feeling? How, how, what did you feel? Uh, it was a very, very sad feeling because uh, he is very, very active even in the technical because he has uh, mentored a lot of uh, people in the engineering field. And uh, yeah, he is a role model for mm -hmm. all our uh, current and future uh, technical community. Mm -hmm. So I felt uh, quite sad and uh, it's a uh, void that uh, we don't get uh, such a person, he is such a human being. Mm. A lot of engineers and scientists who have done their bits and pieces of role. Uh, but uh, having kept uh, in touch with the common man and working uh, till the end of his uh, life actively, uh, we don't find a person like him uh, easily. So. Mm. There you go. That was... Uh the experience uh, of uh, Mr. Nagras Association with uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam. Nagras, thanks very much for sharing your experience. I'm sure our uh, whoever is seeing this uh, uh, interview with you would be very happy to see that uh, you had that uh, association with Dr. Abdul Kalam. Thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome, Raj. Thank you. Thank you.